T. Air Nicole. I am a published author, motivational speaker, and development coach. Um, before I get started, I do want to thank Rochelle, our lovely host. Um, she has put time, money, energy into making sure that today happened. A coin. Hello. <laughs> a pretty coin, I'm sure. And I just wanted to say thank you for having me. I'm honored to share the stage with you beautiful young ladies. Um, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my story. As I was preparing for today, I was thinking about what it meant behind keep your head up, right? And it's rooted in the reality that we all go through stuff. We all deal with our story. But when someone says keep your head up, they're saying it with the intention on encouraging, encouraging you to persevere through that. So I wanted to talk to you guys about perseverance today and how I learned to persevere. I'm gonna start by talking about the textbook definition of perseverance. It means to continue to do something despite difficulty or delay. Now I will say, we as black women are really good with the difficulty. It's that delay <laughs> that is every time. But while that's the textbook definition of perseverance, we also have to think about what does that actually look like, right? It means doing it even when you don't feel like it. It means finding the time, even when you don't have the time. It means having the right people in your corner to hold you accountable to doing the things that you said you wanted to do, mm -hmm. but you no longer feel like doing. It means setting actionable goals and attaching realistic deadlines and then achieving those goals. So I've always been told that I'm good at perseverance, but how many of you guys realize you can hear something about yourself mm -hmm. Not until you know it for yourself yeah. that it means anything. Yeah. So for me, I learned my ability to persevere in 2016. Um, I was pregnant with twins, and on my 25th birthday, I learned that one of my twins had been dead for six weeks. Wow. And as a result of that miscarriage, the remaining twin had suffered severe brain damage. And I, I still remember to this day, and I did what any mother would, and I went through every test, every report, they drew blood, they drew amniotic sac fluid, they did everything they could possibly think of. And I was willing to show up at any doctor, I drove an hour just to get to a specialist, just to make sure my child was okay. And the final test was an MRI. And I remember sitting in the MRI, which, can anyone explain why they're so cold? <laughs> like, honestly. Um, a lot of times we say, you know, not my will, but yours. And that's the politically correct answer. But as I laid in that MRI machine, I said, God, I can't handle your will. I need this one. Can you just let this, can I just have it this time? And then you start arguing, I'll do whatever. You know, I won't miss church ever again. <laughs> All the bargaining tactics we tried to avoid what's already been written. And so on that day I learned that as a result of the first miscarriage, my remaining twin had suffered brain damage to the extent where he would need brain surgery within a week of life, lung surgery within a year of life, he would need 24 hour care his entire life, he wouldn't be able to process visual stimuli, he probably wouldn't be able to walk properly. And if he survived the pregnancy, best case scenario, he would live to be 20. And that is a life full of hurt, pain, doctors, and appointments. So, I made probably one of the most selfless decisions I could have ever fathomed making. And I decided to induce my pregnancy, and I delivered my twins at 23 weeks. And as I held my son in my arms and heard him take his last breath, I made a promise to him that one, his life would not be in vain, and that two, I would live a life that they would have been proud to be a part of. And it was in that moment that I really learned what perseverance looked like. I didn't know how, 
I didn't know what I was gonna do, but I knew no matter what, I would not break that promise. And as I went through my healing process, I realized a few things. I realized how you think about yourself, how you speak about yourself, and how you feel about yourself will determine the life that you have. And I read a quote on, on social media the other day. It said, be careful how you talk about yourself. The universe doesn't know it's a joke. That's good. And so I'm going to have a, a hot moment with you guys. So humble, open, and transparent. And I'm going to ask you guys to do the same. So I'm going to share some things that I used to say about myself. And if you've ever said these things, if you could just raise your hand if you, if you feel comfortable being honest. So I would say things like, that's just the way I am. Or things like, I suck at dating. Or I would say things like, I'm just no good with money. Or, I don't need a lot of friends. And in the healing process, I realized one very important thing. I think, therefore I am. If you think you don't need a lot of friends, guess what? You sure won't have them. <laughs> you surely won't. If you think you suck with money, you'll continue to do that. And I began to investigate or and, and look into the law of attraction. Does everyone heard the law of attraction? Yeah. What I found in my study is it's one of very few times where science and religion align. Which to me says, this really, really works. <laughs> and in my understanding of the law of attraction, I also realized that we can't say things like, I want to get out of debt because the subject of your sentence is debt. Mm -hmm. So the universe brings more debt into your life. So being even just as simple as, I wanna be financially free to travel the world, mm -hmm. I wanna experience X, Y, and Z. Speak positively, mm -hmm. as opposed to just saying, I don't want this. Start speaking what you want, because what you focus on grows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, all that's fine and dandy, right? But I wouldn't sit here and not tell you how to actually do the work of perseverance. So I have three steps for your consideration when you're facing something that you just need a little bit of perseverance to get through. The first step that I have is to clean out your input. Who are you following on social media? Who are you talking to on a consistent basis? Who is speaking into and over your life? Mm -hmm. That all makes a difference. Come on now. And there are studies that show that if you look at a person's life over a 10 year window, their annual salary will be within $1,000 of the average of their five closest friends. Mm -hmm. Who you hang around matters. And that's with money because that's the one thing we can track, right? But think about that emotionally physically, mentally, financially, professionally. My five closest friends don't all do the same field, but we're all killing the game in our own respective rights. And that you wanna be around people that forces you to level up just to sit down and have a conversation. Those are the people you wanna surround yourself with. Step two, you wanna set actionable goals with realistic deadlines. So we've all heard of SMART goals, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Think about what that really means. You want to be specific. Mm -hmm. So I want to lose weight is not specific enough because the moment you lost one pound, <laughs> congratulations, <laughs> you did it. But then you're not happy, but you met your goal technically, right? You want to make sure your goals are measurable. So goals like I want to be happy, aren't really something that you can measure. What does happiness look like for you? Start to define that in measurable terms so that you can actually say, yes, I did reach it, or no, I didn't. 
and then it's a it's an unbiased response to that. You want to make sure your goals are attainable. Now, in my opinion, any goal is attainable with the right deadline. But you want to make sure it's within your it, within your reach, right? You also want to make sure your goals are relevant to your overall picture. So I'm an author, I'm a speaker, I'm a development coach. If I woke up one day and said I want to go to the Olympics for gymnastics, <laughs> is that relevant? <laughs> is the time, effort, and energy worth taking away from my primary focus? So making, I'm not saying I can't go take a gymnastics class. <laughs> is that worth sacrificing my purpose? And then lastly, you want to make sure that there's time bound, meaning put a deadline on it. Okay? Don't just say, I want to do X, Y, and Z. Follow in. And one of my favorite motivational speakers, Lisa Nichols, she helped me understand how to effectively set those deadlines. And so you can have a deadline for when you're going to accomplish the goal, but also consider having deadlines for when you're going to start the goal. That way your brain isn't clogged up with every, like I have some grand ideas, y'all. <laughs> but there's some stuff I can't think about right now. I need to be focused on my current priorities. And I can think about the rest when that start date comes, right? So, set actionable goals with realistic deadlines. Then, my favorite step, accountability partner. There should be someone in your life who has permission to ask the tough questions. There should be someone in your life who's gonna hold you accountable when you don't feel like it. There should be someone in your life who has the sit down and shut up card. Yeah. And here's why. Can I use you as my goal? So I'm focused on my goal, right? But I'm tired. I don't really feel like it today. You know what? I'm gonna skip the gym. I'll just go tomorrow. You know what? I've had a long week. I'm just gonna go through the drive through really quick. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm focused on my goal. I'm focused on my goal. But I don't really feel like it today. I mean, I don't have a deadline on it anyway. I'll get there when I get there. And before you know it, you're all the way over here. And you think you're focused on your goals. And I'm a mile away. So accountability is going to say, no, you said you were going to do my part. You're going to take your my part to the gym. Accountability is going to say, should you really be eating out tonight? I think you pulled out something for dinner. <laughs> accountability is going to say, do you really need some shoes? Or are some of the shoes in your closet going to work okay? Accountability is going to say, Remember what you said you wanted? How can I help support you in that? Mm -hmm. That's why accountability is important. Because we can convince ourselves that we're focused on our goal and be on the other side of the room and not even notice it. Okay? So, these conferences, you get a lot of great information. I wanted to leave you guys with some things, some resources to help you go past today. Because I feel like, you know, we go to these conferences, we take all these great notes, and then we throw the notebook in the closet, and you never look at it again, right? Anybody else? I have a whole notebook full of notes that I take at conferences. Um, so I have three sets of resources that I, that I can help support you in your endeavors. So my first set of resources, I have my books. So my first book, is 23 and finally loving me. And no, I'm not 23 anymore. <laughs> and you get that question a lot. Um, but I talk about self-love, healing, growth, development, and some of the mental health challenges that I've faced in, over my life. And not only the challenges, but how do you get through them. My second book is called When Life Gives You Lemons. And it talks about perseverance. It talks about what do you do when life actually gives you lemons. How do you get through that? Because if I'm being honest, losing my twins was probably the most sour lemon I've ever received in my life. 
and out of that pain birthed my purpose. And then I'm actually, um, pre-orders are available for my third book. It will be released June 1st, um, but it's called Life After Loss. And in this book, I talk about how do you deal with the grief, the loss of losing a baby. And I don't just talk about the mother of the baby, I talk about the father of that baby, the grandparents of that baby, the aunts, the uncles, the godparents, anybody who was expecting a baby and ended up with an angel. And I talk about how do you deal with the grief and how do you support someone through that in an effective manner. So those are my books. The second set of resources that I have are, I do offer development coaching. I have a couple of my clients here. Hey guys. <laughs> um, but I offer one-on-one -on -one support guidance, um, and just encouragement, and that accountability. Um, I'm sure I get on Twitter every once in a while. They're not going to tell you that, but I do. That's okay. But I'm, I'm holding them accountable to the things that they said they wanted. And it's weekly accountability. And someone who's willing to ask the tough questions and not accept the, the excuses that come. Then my third set of resources are on my social media platform. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, YouTube, um, in LinkedIn, you name it. But on all of those platforms, you will receive daily inspiration, motivation, and encouragement, all at the name Nicole's Network. And so, and then on YouTube, I have Self Care Sundays, which how many of y'all know we don't take care of ourselves enough? Mm -hmm. Self Care Sundays. I have Motivational Mondays to get your, mon your work week started off on the right foot. And then we have Thoughtful Thursdays, which are speaking to the how-tos behind developing and growing your business. Um, and it is also applicable information for if you're a manager in your current field as well. So that's all I have for you guys. First and foremost, thank you so much for having me and allowing me to share my story. Um, I do like to hear other people's story as well. So if you Come up to me later, I'd be happy to hear your stories. My books are in the back if you're interested in getting some. Um, they make great gifts as well. Um, I like to challenge people to gift books so that we can read more. Yeah. Even if it's not my book, give me a book. Um, because if you expand someone's brain, it will never go back to the same level that it was before that. You can never unlearn things. So help people learn the good stuff. Um, so again, my name is Tierra Nicole, and I thank you for your time today.